This is example number 2.1 of chapter 2. What we are doing in this chapter is adding these two forces and we will find the resultant force. We will do it for, by two methods, the graphical method and the components method. Let's start by the graphical method. As you recall from the theory, what we have to do is draw our parallelepipedal. So what we are going to do is copy this vector over here, and we copy this vector over here, and the resultant force will be this one right here. This is our resultant force. Now we have to find all the angles that constitute our parallelepipedal. So the first angle that we want to find is this one right here. So as you recall that angle, that will be 180 minus 30 minus 45. And that's 105. So we have found this angle. And as you know, the, this angle over here will be exactly the same. And you recall also that a parallelogram or parallel people has 160 degrees, the sum of all angles. So we have 360 minus 2 times 105. That gives me 210, right? If I divide that, sorry, that gives me 150. If I divide that, by 2 give me 75 degrees. So this angle over here is 75. So finally, I have all the parallelogram with all the features. So how do I find the resultant force? For that, I will use the cosine law. And I will use this triangle right here. So I would say that my resultant force will be equal to this side, which is F1 squared plus this side over here, which is F2, this side over here, which is F2. minus 2 times F1 times F2 cosine of the angle between those two vectors, which is 75. And we substitute all the values, and we get F1 is 600 squared plus F2 is 800 squared minus 2, 600, 800, cosine of 75. So I calculate that, please do that, and I get the result that my resultant force is 866.9 newtons. Please do not forget the units. So we are, we're able to find this resultant force. Now we need to find the angle of that resultant force with the x-axis. So I will find this angle over here, and I will add 45. That will give me the total angle. How do I find this angle? I will use the sine law. So as you see, I know this resultant force, and I know this angle, so I can write that the resultant force over sine of 75 is equal to F2, which is 800, over sine of phi. Therefore, sine of phi, I solve for that angle, right, will be 800 Fr divided by or multiply, yeah, sorry, I multiply that 800, that's not right, 
75 divided by fr. Okay, so, and then I, of course, I have to get the inverse of a sine, and I get that C is equals to, oh, I get that C is equals to 63.04 degrees. But as I said, we need the angle from the x-axis. So we have to add 45. So the angle that we need is this one right here. So let's call that angle theta. And therefore theta is equal to phi plus 45, which is equal to 108. And that's the result. This is what is called the graphical method. So let's do the same problem by solving it by components. So I'm going to draw my forces again. This is x, this is y, I have my force F1, and I have my force F2. And this is 30 degrees. How do I solve my components? Well, I will find, let me do it in pink, I will find the x component and the y component of F1, and I will find the y component and the x component of F2, and I will add this together. So let's do F1. So F1 as a vector will be equals to Fx1, in i plus fy1 in j. So as you see, this is a vector and these are unique vectors that describe a direction. So what is fx1? That will be equals to f1 is 600, and the adjacent will be cosine of 45 in i. And the Y, y component will be 600 cosine because it's the opposite of 45 in J. So finally F1 give me six hundred is 300 square root of 2i plus 300 square root of 2 in J. And all that is in Newtons. Let's do F2. F2 will be equals to this force right here, which is 800. So let me write it the same way that I wrote F1. So 800. Now, the adjacent is the cosine, and it's in the ne opposite side, right? It's in the negative side of x. So it will be negative. Cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2 in i, and the opposite, which is the sine, right, will be 800, and it's in the positive side of y, 1 half in j. So therefore, I have f2 is equals to negative 400 square root of 3 in i plus 400 j and only 9 in newtons. Now, what I do to find the resultant force, let me write that in yellow. I add f1 and f2 as vectors, therefore I add the i components and I add the j components. 
that will give me 300 square root of 2 minus 400 square root of 3 in i and that will give me 300 square root of 2 plus 400 in j. And I have the result over here that gives me that the resultant force, the first component is negative 2, 68.6 in i plus 824.3 in j. So this is the vector, but in order to compare it to my other solution, I have to get the magnitude. Remember that the magnitude will be equals to the x. This is the magnitude, so I don't have a line over here because this is the magnitude, plus the y square root of that. If I do that, I square this value, and I square this value, I get that the resultant force is equals to 866.9. As I know you see, I got exactly the same value that I got here with the other method. Now we have to find the direction. We can draw our vector. We know that this is a negative value in i here and a positive value in j. So we know that our resultant force is right here. So what we are going to do is find this angle over here. I'm going to call that angle phi. And that will be the tangent of the y component over the x component. So I know the angle phi will be tangent negative 1 of the y component over the x component. That is tangent of 824.3 divided by 268.6. Why don't I include the negative value? Because I already saying that I'm using this absolute value. This is fx and this is fy. That gives me a value of 72 degrees. But again, I like to find this angle. I call this theta. So what we need to find is theta, which is the positive angle respect to the x-axis. So as you see, we have to subtract 180, which is the whole angle, minus phi. So here, theta will be 180 minus phi. And 180 minus 72 is theta is equals to 108 degrees. And this is exactly the same value we got using the other method. So you can choose either method. It's up to you which one feels you more comfortable.